So I support this bill and commend this bill to the House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Julianne Jinta. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Tanakwe. Tanako Toe Fare. This bill, like so much that the National Party has done since they've been in government, is okay. It's not great. It's definitely not world changing. Uh, there's some things that are definitely not ideal about it. Uh, when it comes to transport, I think they've done some of the bare minimum that probably should have happened a few years ago. For example, um, updating the heavy vehicle regulations to align with the changes to the land transport rule around vehicle dimensions. Now, the Green Party hasn't supported bigger, heavier trucks because it's not very good for our roads. It's not very good for safety on our roads. Um, but some of the changes around vehicle dimensions have to do with accommodating the reality of passenger transport services in Auckland, particularly bus services. Fully loaded buses and double-decker buses weren't able to comply with our rules. Even though we knew that it was happening, bus companies weren't able to buy buses that were in accordance with the law, and the law had to change to reflect that. So we support that. Um, some of the changes around strengthening the legislation covering alcohol interlocks. It's good, and I think the Select Committee made that even better because there were some issues that were raised by uh, the Law Society, um, and I, I believe the Select Committee made um, quite a huge improvement to the legislation as drafted would have enabled the police to confiscate the vehicle of someone just on the basis that they believed they knew who who might have disobeyed the law. Um, so there was a serious issue around um, people's rights that was affected in the way the legislation was originally drafted. We heard from the submitters, we heard that there were issues um, around that, and we amended the law to improve it. I, I believe it has been improved, so we can still support that. Most of this debate has been around the changes to the regulatory system for small passenger services. Um, to accommodate the um, disruptive services and technology like Uber. Now, I have to say, when it comes to Uber, it's really good technology. And what's great about it, the app itself, the software, is that it enables better utilization of the vehicles that are on the road. And it means that people can start seeing uh, car transport as just one tool in their transport toolkit. And that's something the Greens have been advocating for a long time, which is a much more balanced transport system, where you've got decent, reliable, frequent public transport in our major towns and cities. Safe walking and cycling means people don't have to own a car. They don't have to shoulder that expense. But they do have access to a car when they need to use it. And Uber is one example of how a car suddenly just becomes you know, another tool in your transport toolkit. You're looking up what's the best option to get from A to B. You've got some passenger transport options, bus and train or ferry services, or walking and cycling, and you can combine those. Or um, at some times of the day, a car is going to be the best option. But the issue with Uber as a company is that they're actually not a very ethical company. And uh, although their software is very, very useful, um, and I do believe it'll end up being implemented and adopted by other transports mobility agencies and probably taxi drivers, the way they've gone about it has been quite bad and it's eroding the wages of taxi drivers. So, you know, I think the reality is that if we get self-driving cars in the next 10 or 20 years, driving will no longer be a profession. And that's one example of how with increasing automation we need a, a tax system and benefit system that recognizes that and shares resources more fairly, um, which is very off topic from this bill. But, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, the reality is that um, we can agree with most of the changes because I think they have struck a good balance, but we will be supporting Sumeroni's um, uh, SOPs when the committee stages of this bill come up, and particularly the SOP around the requirement for uh, braille signage in passenger transport services. I do think this is really important. And Jonathan Young gave this example of a taxi driver in New Plymouth, which is a very small town with very high car ownership and very few people using taxis. But the reality is that people who are impaired, um, vision impaired, might rely quite heavily on taxis. And 
the reality is that this isn't about like, oh, well, it's only a small percentage of people who need this Braille signage, so on balance, we don't think that everyone should have to pay for it. That's, that's not how it works in this society. We actually want to lift everyone up to the same level. And just because someone is vision impaired doesn't mean that they shouldn't have the right to know what's going on in the vehicle that they're getting into. And you can't make that kind of crude cost-benefit analysis, oh, it only benefits one person in New Plymouth, so we don't really need it because they know their regular taxi driver. Well, you couldn't say that in Auckland because there's no chance in a city of one and a half million people that somebody who's vision impaired and regular, regularly using taxis is going to have the same taxi driver every time. That's just not how it works. There are heaps of taxi drivers in Auckland. And we heard from the Blind Foundation that they were extremely opposed to this change. And I just think that the test of a decent society is how it treats its most vulnerable people. And people who are vision impaired, need, they, they deserve that our laws and regulations meet their needs at a bare minimum. Because the, the rest of us can put up with a lot of additional cost or additional um, disruption. We can do that because we can see. And things are quite easy for us. But we should be designing the system around the people who have the greatest challenges. And so uh, the Green Party will be 100% supporting Sue Maroney's SOP. And um, we support the minority report that the Labor Party's put in. Uh, um, <clears throat> so on balance, I'd say the Green Party can support the bill. We'd really like to see this SOP go through that would look out for our most vulnerable people. And we would like to see some greater vision. I know the National Party try, and it's great that the rhetoric's gone there, that they're embracing technology and they're embracing the future. But the reality is, with the overall approach to transport funding and policy, they're pretty far behind, and they're still orienting everything around private car ownership. Uh, with the vast majority of the transport budget going on a few extremely expensive stretches of highway, um, we haven't actually seen them embrace technology and the reality that cities are most effective when they're designed around people, not cars. And so the Green Party will continue to advocate for a transport policy that it would actually probably be incredibly popular with everyone in Auckland um, and our other major cities. But particularly in Auckland, I think people have realized no matter who they vote for, they support Green Party transport policy. Because we have realized that the only way to enable people to get around our town, to get around Auckland now is to invest in public transport. And the National Party have sadly I know not all of their members agree with this, but sadly, due to Stephen Joyce as Transport Minister from 2008 to 2011 and now Minister on the of Finance, bill, please. have uh, gone down the route of um, spending most of the money on private infrastructure that supports private car ownership, but actually results in a whole lot more congestion. So the Green Party supports this bill. We believe it could be better, and the National Party could do a whole lot more for transport in this country if they embraced a more balanced approach to transport spending. Give the same speech. Mr. Speaker. Dennis O'Rourke. Uh, Mr. Speaker, New Zealand.